Now, the closet, let's talk about the closet doors. So the closet doors, uh, they're, they're a little wider. I like to do them uh, at six feet. I don't remember how much we had here. So let me measure the opening of the closet. So eight feet two. So a six foot, uh, six feet uh, wide doors, sliding doors should look, uh, should work just fine. So I'll reference the middle point here and then I'll do an offset, three feet, one time to the left, one time to the right. Erase this using the erase command, trim, and join. And you get the idea, just literally rinse and repeat at this point. Um, now here, what I can do is, I can select them, but I will reference this. I'll go from here, reference it and go up, and then do like this, and then the same from the other side, like this. And we're able to, to reference this. This is because of the snap settings that we, uh, we previously inserted. So it's this one, the one that's called object snap tracking. So that's the one that allows you like to um, basically reference like far away from the different snap points. And now I will just continue and join these. So here we go. Into this. Here's the joint. Okay, this is looking clean so far. I think we have a few more doors and then we should be close to the windows as well. So now here, I think we did the bedroom. I'm wondering, should we do the windows as we're creating um, as we're creating the spaces, we can actually do that. So here I will erase that. So that way it's relevant for the space. Uh, so here I'll just go back to the garage. I did miss the door. So let's add the garage door. So I'll add it from the middle. And the two car garage door usually is 16 feet. Uh, I think there's bigger, uh, bigger ones as well. Uh, this garage that I created is total 22 from the outside. So we'll just, we'll just do uh, 16 feet for now. So we will do an offset. Uh, of eight feet to the right, then another eight feet to the left, then we'll erase this, trim, then join. Okay, I think this is looking good. Then I think I'll just join these as well, I'm selecting all of them. You might be wondering, like, does the dimension get affected when it's selected? Um, and when I'm doing the join, and the answer is no, it doesn't get affected. The join command only affects like polylines usually. Uh, it doesn't affect any of like, it doesn't affect uh, blocks, dimensions, text elements. So so that's why I'm using, uh, that's why I'm able to select the dimension and nothing happens to them. Okay, so for the garage, I'm thinking, I like to add like high windows uh, on the top. So I will do like maybe a couple windows on the, on the left side here. Uh, and then, and then maybe we'll add a door to the left. So let me see how wide this is. So in the inside is 21.7. So I'm thinking we add like maybe uh, six feet wide windows, like two of them. So I will do, I'll do like one foot away from here or two feet away like this. And then I'll copy this down. I'll copy it by six feet. Uh, and now I want to show you actually a new command, which is the mirror command. So I will use the mirror command to actually like mirror this, uh, these two lines to the other side. So that way it's an equal distance uh, from here and to the other side. Okay, so the dimension is in the way, but here it should be two feet. Okay, you can see this. Um, and the way the mirror command works is uh, you can either start it first uh, and you type MI. That's the shortcut or the alias. Or on the left side, if you'd rather click on the icons, but I really recommend you know the aliases. Uh, it's gonna be well, I don't, I don't use it from here. So, but it's this icon right here, the mirror. Okay, uh, so we can either start it first. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then when you start the command, the modifying command first, it will always ask you to select the objects. So now I'll select the objects. Uh, it's always an extra step because now you need to confirm the selection by hitting return. And now the command will start. The way it works is that we're going to specify the first point uh, of the mirroring line. So I will tell it to mirror based like on, you need to mirror based on two points. So I will tell it to reference the middle point here, like as my first mirror point. And then I'm going to go to the left and that's like, the, it's going to be like the mirror line. So the mirror line is along the green reference line and it will basically flip it based on this line from the top to the bottom to create uh, these openings. So I will do that. I'll click that with the mouse to confirm the the mirror line. And then it's asking me if I want to erase the source objects, which are the two lines that I had uh, previously. And I don't want to do that because I do want to keep them. So I will select no. And then now we can do just trim and then like this. And then and we do like that. And this is looking good. 
So I do want to illustrate the mirror command a little bit further. Maybe it wasn't perfectly clear. So I'll just do like a circle here uh, using the, the circle command, of course. And then I'll just do like a polyline here. And then I'll do another one like that goes from the middle, something like this. Okay. So this is looking good. So I'm using the lines just as references for you to see the mirror line. Uh, the mirror line is virtual. You don't need an actual line. You can just draw it with the cursor. Uh, so I'll start the mirror command, but this time I will select the circle first, and then I'm going to start the mirror. And then I'm going to tell it to mirror based on the line that's uh, vertical, essentially. So I'll tell it from this point to this point to the bottom. It doesn't matter how far you go away within the line, as long as like you're sticking in the direction. So if I'm doing this from the top to the bottom, it will mirror it to the left side. And even if I go to the top, like instead, like it will still mirror it based on this, it will flip it to this direction. So I'll click on that and I will say the other erase source object, I'll select no. Now, let's say like I want to mirror this from the top to the bottom, I'll select it. And then from here, basically, I will start the mirror command again, then click from this corner to the right or to the left. Again, it doesn't matter as long as you're within the mirror line. Um, and then I'll click that and I will not erase the source object. I want to show you one more thing. Let's say if I want to mirror like diagonally. So I want to mirror this like from this corner. I want to mirror it to this corner right here. So the same process, I'll select the circle. I'll start the mirror command. And then from the center point, like from the middle point of the two lines, I'll click. And then I'll basically go diagonally. Um, and then that should, okay. So if we do it from this point, it will not work. Uh, maybe I should move this. I thought it should work. But let's try now. Maybe this should work better. Mm, okay. But, oh, because I know why it's not working. Because the angle I'm using is not actually the 45 angle. So for this to work properly, I'll show you what I need to do. I messed this up, but it's good just so we point out the polar tracking on the bottom. So if you remember earlier when we were talking about the status bar and, and the snap settings and whatnot, we had one setting that's called the polar tracking, which is this guy right here. Um, and I'm going to right click on it so you see the options. So this setting actually allows us to uh, reference like lines or objects like in an angular way. So what does that mean is that the setting that I had originally, like from my end, by default, it's 90, but I had it at 30 for some reason. Um, so, so this one, like every 30 degrees, it will show you a green reference line. So let me illustrate this. I'm going to do another line here. So I'm going to click somewhere and go to the right. You will see this. We will see the green reference line. And that is actually because of the polar tracking, because every 30 degrees, it will show me this. So here, if I move 30 degrees, you will see another green reference line. And you can lock to it and draw and draw in that direction. And then if I go up to 60, you will see it again. And then 90, and then the opposite direction at 120, then 150, and then 180. And you get the idea. It's like a full circle. So here's 150 like on the bottom, here's 120, here's 90 going down, and so on. Now, if I want the mirror that I wanted to show you to work, I need to switch the polar tracking to show me or to lock at every 45 degrees instead of every 30. So I will switch to the 45. And then now again, let's say a line. So here's 0, 45, 90, 135. You get the idea. And now when I select the circle and I want a mirror diagonally, I'll do the mirror. And then I'll click from the middle point and then I'll go in that direction. And you will see it will mirror it based on that, like from, from the top left to the bottom right. And the same if I go this direction, uh, it will mirror it. And again, the mirror line is virtual. You don't need to draw it. You just need to point the cursor in the right direction and you'll be able to mirror. Now I'll click escape and actually erase these objects. And now we can, now we can continue using the mirror command throughout the course, um, and then we'll keep going with the openings.